ethical commitments of the PSC and more generally sort of economic justice and you know the class dimension of the PSC versus the district general. So we can now get into some of the tactics. So the very first thing we did is we hired a private investigator for $5,000 um, who investigate each member of the PSC uh, commission. Luckily for us, one of them had investments in Exelon, which we, uh, is, well, you can kind of see where this is going. So we, um, very early on in the year-long campaign, leaked to local reporters, columnists, columnists who would be looking to write things like, hey, remember this PSC thing? It might be an issue. Um, you know, they have so much power, but there's only three of them. How do we have any ethical checks on them? So we leaked that this might be an issue to local reporters. Um, I'll talk about some of our other strategies, but first I'll talk about sort of the extension of this ethical theme. Um, we would be gradually increasing the concentration of this leaks before each um, uh, hearing. So this first one would be before first hearing, all the way up until the third one before third hearing, where we leak all of the information, the actual documents of the investment purchases by the PSC commissioner. Um, and we would leak this to a much bigger paper, whereas the first leak would be you know, a local columnist in DCS or Georgetown or, or city paper. Um, we would leak this to Washington Post or Politico. Um, and they would hopefully print a larger expose about the individual PSC member. Um, at which point we would have some of our local organizers organize a rally about this saying, because um, earlier we would have also commissioned the economic study showing you know, this would have been more expensive. So we would have a socioeconomic justice focused rally saying, how can we trust these PSC commissioners who are wealthy and invested in Exelon to make decisions that are best for DC ratepayers generally, um, you know, if it's like they're just making money off the workers' backs. So we would have a rally before the meeting, and then we would funnel those people into the meeting itself to say, hey, this would cost me more money, don't do it. Just person after person saying along that theme. Um, of course, we would still have some of the other themes brought up. Um, we would run ads about the national security, saying you should have you know separate energy companies. That way, if one of them gets knocked out, the whole eastern seaboard doesn't lose their power. We would run ads about the um, uh, environmental impact of it. We already have the environmental uh, activists with us, they would be speaking as well, but the main theme, of course, is the socioeconomic justice aspect of it, of, you know, we'd be handing out flyers, doing grassroots act activism in the poorest parts of the city, saying, you know, don't get ripped off, don't have to pay extra for electricity, just because these guys won't have to. So we'd be putting ethical pressure on the PSC to vote no or recuse themselves, the ones who are ethically uh, constrained, and they would obviously want to keep their jobs, so they'd be inclined to do so. If they don't, they would have the threat of Mayor Bowser not reappointing them. That's our strategy. In a nutshell, any questions? <laughs> that was very good. <laughs> How did you, I have a question. How did you want to allocate your budget? Can you just talk to the allocation? Oh. Yes. Um, 5000 for private investigators, 10000 for opinion poll about you know what is it the DC residents respond to by various class uh, income amount, um, 5,000 for social media boosting up the various articles, um, 10,000 for, is that another opinion for life? Yeah. Sorry, but we rushed the budget a little bit. Sorry. Um, <laughs> we always do. <laughs> <laughs> um, 1,500 for the printed ads about the national security and about the environmentalism. So national security and like The Economist, environmentalism in like a city paper or whatever environmentalist would be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. All right, great. Thanks, guys. So, group one, making it political accountability in advance for the Public Service Commission. Good summary? Yep. Who wants to go next? You guys? All right, fire away. Yeah, come over there. <laughs> All right, same thing with the time signal. This means you have two minutes left. Wait, wait, set. Sorry. This means you have two minutes left. This means you have one minute left. That's 30 seconds left. <laughs> So, okay, so of course we're advocating to stop the merger. So our tagline essentially is stop epsilon expansion. And so we know the context. The context is there's not much public awareness. 
there's not too much, and eight out of nine people on the city council do, have not expressed strong views either way. And uh, just the context, in terms of the audiences we're looking at, our focus wasn't so much on the three decision makers, the direct, in, the direct decision makers themselves. So rather than focusing on them and sort of the accountability on their part, we focus more on the indirect influencers. With, but also the direct influences. We're larger on indirect influences, which would be DC residents, and consumers, the environmental groups, and activists, and eventually the media as well. So our message is very simple. Exelon's proposed merge is not stable, not sustainable, and not safe. So as you can see, there are three discrete parts to this, and these correspond to the three, the three strong concerns. The first being that of pricing uh, stability, because uh, as we know, the electricity price in Baltimore went up after expansion, uh, after consolidation took place. The second being um, threats to sustainability because Exelon have been, uh, the conglomerate have been known to lobby against renewable energy efforts in the past, and so it would be not safe. So safe would be in the context of uh, trying to commission old outdated nuclear technology. And so each of these three concerns will correspond with each of the three public hearings. And so what we are going to do is for each of the public hearings, we are going to have a before after public awareness campaign, and we're going to have protests and rallies and sit-ins both before and after. So that's almost like the double whammy, a sucker punch. And the latter is important because follow-up matters. Underrated but it matters. So, so if we can just look at the tactics and the financial breakdown. So three rallies around each other before and after, like I said, there's a free six social media buys. Again, three before, three after, thirty thousand dollars. The petition, which is also free, will be posted uh, will be released at the end of the first hearing. The reason we do this is because we want to give it enough time for momentum to be built up. We don't want to do it too early so that momentum dies down or it just implodes in the way. The building of the website important to raise awareness for um, technologically side consumers, $2,500. We hire a private investigator to investigate PSC members in the DC Council, $5,000. And three economic studies from, from, two dis from two sources. So one is academic sources, because those are sources that have legitimacy. They, can, they have legitimacy among a crowd that, a DC crowd that is both largely democratic, but also again, from conservative think tanks. Because often views like our renewable energy are lack of control. Often views like renewable energy are uh, advocated by groups that are liberal leanings, and things like um, the consolidation of business are championed by conservative think tanks. But if we get them to write pieces talking against that, that would be interesting because then the average um, layman who's speaking think, oh, if even a conservative group says that this is bad for reasons of pricing, for reasons of safety, and for reasons of uh, sustainability, then surely there's something very really wrong with this. Then the advertising will be print, broadcast, social media, again 30,000 before, another 30,000 after. And opinion polls, one at the beginning and end of each rally, so $10,000 in that. So that sums it up. So just to reiterate, not stable, not sustainable, not safe. We're doing everything we can to stop the economic expansion. We're working with the public to fund the pressure, but we're not focusing right on the top because we don't want people to feel vulnerable, but we're doing more for bottom top captain. That's us. Right. Also, I must say, both of you under time. Your <laughs> um, this client's hating me just wrap up. I've heard that a thousand times. Very good. Okay, so this one was more focused on sort of a public message. There was a slogan. Um, different messages at different times of the, of the, of the process. Okay, cool. And I'm going to, by the way, I'm going to kind of give you guys my feedback after all three are done, and then I'm going to tell you what we actually did. All right? Go for it, guys. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Process of eliminating. Uh, all right, let's see what we got here. I'm going to move so that I'm not following you. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so for our team, um, we share the same goal. We want to stop the merger. Um, our context, generally speaking, uh, we have two main 
points. First is that there's a lot of apathy. This is not something, not an issue that has a lot of momentum behind it necessarily. Um, so that's going to be our challenge. We want to convince people to think not about price but about issue. Um, what works to our advantage is that we have a very politically active liberal city. The Obama administration has made clean energy one of its priorities. Um, and we want to work with this and uh, really mobilize the population. Um, so two things that we're going to do uh, that play into that, we're going to um, produce negative coverage about the negative impacts of nuclear power so as to address the apathetic portion of our population. Um, and we will also uh, try to really mobilize uh, support for clean energy and to take advantage of the fact that we do have a lot, a very active city. Um, our audience kind of works in a flow chart. Um, so the way that we thought of it, we wanted to think of uh, who, who we really may want to affect um, and then build down from there. So um, our DMs are our PSCs, um, our DIs are the mayor and the DC council, and then our um, IDIs are the shareholders, bill payers, uh, activists, students, and small business owners. Um, and we want to think about this last portion in terms of how we can build coalitions, how we can um, use these people in uh, different ways to get out a message. Um, so our message, what do we want to say? We want to have a heavy influence on the, a heavy emphasis on the risks of nuclear energy. Um, so we want people to know that this is something that is going to get more and more expensive um, in the long run. It's not, once you turn it on, it's not something you can turn off, and it's unsustainable. So we want to have a focus on the things that people might actually like about this merger. We want to show that that is not necessarily going to stay that way. Um, and then who, who are we going to, um, who do people trust? We made a list and kind of looked at like, where do people get their news? Where, where are people um, looking? So the first thing we said was news media, uh, business journals, uh, social media, schools, and especially universities, and uh, constituents. Um, and where do we want to, to broadcast our message? Widely public areas, the metro is a big place where we want to have uh, ad campaigns um, and signs and uh, have people handing out pamphlets, that sort of thing. Um, and also uh, traditional media, so we want to have newspapers, um, business journals, these sorts of things, and social media will be a big part of that. So in terms of tactics, our campaign is going to be built in three phases. So first we want to build awareness. Um, that's going to be about the first four months of our campaign. Um, then we want to have the second phase be community mobilization. Um, and then the third phase is to activate decision makers. Um, so the way that that looks, uh, starting in January, each of these is going to sort of revolve around one of our uh, town hall meetings that we'll have. So we want this to kind of work in waves and build up and also have a deeper campaign with more popular support with each phase. Um, so first and foremost, starting in January, we will build a website with our message. Um, we'll have a social media campaign with the hashtag XOutExcelon. Um, and we're going to create a media list. So we're going to do the research we need to see who have been the main journalists um, on clean energy, we'll start working with them. Um, and we will have a launch meeting um, and then start building social media support through the hashtag um, and through uh, hopefully uh, people sharing um, news about this. Um, in February, we'll try to start building student coalitions, uh, start building more coalitions among activists, and we'll be um, pitching stories about the downsides of nuclear energy. Uh, what I forgot to say in January is that we're hiring a private investigator. Um, <laughs> what he's going to be doing is looking at our stakeholders. Where do they go? What do they do? What do they care about? And our uh, communications campaign is going to be strategic. Um, and then the way that each one of, every time we have a meeting, the way this is going to work, two weeks before, we're going to be pitching articles like crazy. We're going to be having a social media push with that. We're going to get everyone we can to share those uh, messages. We'll have a rally the day of, which looks like a protest. Um, and then the day after, we'll have press releases and social media push. Um, this is going to continue with each one of the town hall meetings. And our wide, our last event that we are going to have is going to be a um, ball with um, main our key stakeholders, uh, where everyone, including the mayor, uh, will be invited. Um, and it will be a way for us to talk about our cause um, in a fancy way where people get to come and enjoy a ball and enjoy a nice day. <laughs> Great job. Four seconds to spare.
like which was on the paper, I left it off of here. So it comes in right here. What's your what's your overall strategy? And each of you had one, right? So it was go hard negative on the PSC, which I want to talk about. Um, sort of activate the public, have the slogan, and then I think y'all's strategy was sort of sort of similar, right? It was sort of have a, a campaign that was meant to mobilize different constituencies. So all good stuff. Um, here are my kind of top lines for each of you to take away. First of all, if you take all of the stuff that all of you talked about and smished it into one campaign, then you would have a very good, comprehensive, completely serviceable campaign. In the real world, you want to have a lot of ideas when you start, and you want to try different things, like FDR with the Great Depression, right? Try everything and something's going to work. In the real world, we actually did pretty much everything you guys said, and a bunch of other stuff too, and some of it worked and some of it didn't. We did not hire a private investigator. Um, mostly because we didn't think of it, but also because <laughs> the client is a nonprofit. So this is one real world constraint that I wanted to point out. Your clients are a bunch of enviro nonprofits. They're not going to want to do skinny stuff. So that was actually a problem for me, frankly, <laughs> was that we would come up with these ideas and they would be like, Bleh. one big idea, and again, this is stuff you guys don't know. So just, just to sort of take this exercise a little more into the real world. One thing you don't know, and this is important for, for Go Negative team over here, is that the Public Service Commission are supposed to be above the scrum of politics. So if you go hard negative on them, they may s backlash on you really hard, right? However, if you do determine that one of them is sort of corrupt, um, that actually could be a very important thing to point out. And your political theory, which is they will want to completely appear above board, is very good. In fact, that was our strategy with the mayor's office, because as it turned out, the mayor's principal advisor on energy was a former vice president of PEPCO. Uh, and there were a couple of other former PEPCO executives that were in very high level positions in the mayor's office, which eventually did side with the merger after being bribed by PEPCO to the tune of $25 million of free land to build a soccer stadium. She changed her position the next week. Isn't that disgusting? Excellent also gave $10,000 to her inauguration hall. Um, um, okay, you guys, I love the slogan. Right, and the, the alliteration, so what was it? Don't tell me, don't tell me. Not stable, not sustainable, not safe. When in doubt, alliterate, right? Three S's, beautiful. <laughs> rhyming is even better. Oh, rhyming. Everyone can remember a simple rhyme, okay? So if you're ever doing a PR campaign, find a rhyme. Has to be a good natural rhyme that you can find. And if you're a linguist, you know what the rhyme is the last part of the rhyme. Um, uh, the other thing I really liked about this group was that you wanted to do something off-code. You guys know what off-code is? It was their conservative uh, think tank report. So ev obviously the environmentalists are going to come out and say that nuclear is bad. Obviously, you know, nobody's going to be that surprised if politicians are corrupt. You have to do those things. Like, there will be people that, that mobilize. You guys were exactly right. We wanna, you guys were the mobilized anti-nuclear. Yep, we did that, right? That's your natural constituency, and it works. But in the same risk that they had of like turning the PSC off, you guys would run the risk, which is totally what happened to us, of being pilloried by Exelon as those crazy anti-nuclearos, right? So we got sh we had to fight that really hard. I had to fight it because my clients were all crazy anti-nuclearos, and I was like, no one likes that about you. You can't be that. Um, but that wasn't all you guys had. You had um, support for renewables as well. I think your strategy tipped much more in the environmental direction. Right? I mean, you had some stuff about cost too. There was stuff we didn't get to. There was stuff you didn't get to, right? Exactly, exactly. So there was, and again, exercise. But like, each one of your campaigns was a self contained unit that internally made sense. You guys all worked through, you know, the whole problem. You worked out a budget, like, really good. Um, <laughs> but each, your budget, you know something? But like, somebody said we kind of had to rush the budget at the end. Yeah. I've been in situations where the proposal is due at 5 p.m. Eastern and it's 4.58. And we're like finishing. It's like ah, uh, fucking twenty-five thousand. Like send, like <laughs> more than twice, like more than a lot of times. Um, so this was also a very realistic little laboratory environment, as I'm sure you've seen with other group work. You know, the dynamics in the group emerge very quickly. So there will be the people that um, you know have more of the ideas, and there are the people that become the people that write things down. And there's the person that was the speaker, and there's the person that's pushing for this and not that. Right? That also happens in a company professional setting where you're responsible for coming up with a, a team effort, right? So part of what I wanted to simulate for you guys was in a very brief period of time, just the human dynamics that affect this too. Because ultimately, 
all my cynicism from when the sun was still up aside, like what we're talking about is human beings. Okay, human minds, human feelings, like a lot of this stuff is gut level. And that applies to your audiences that you're trying to influence, but it also applies to the people that you work with. Um, and that's true for any job. But with this in particular, because these problems are so complex, in the real world of this, where, where Exelon actually, where the thing actually happened, like half of my job over two and a half years that this lasted, two and a half years, was keeping everybody together. Because we would have a big victory, and we, we pegged our, our strategy to the different hearings. I think all three of you guys did that. We'd have a big thing at the hearing, and then we'd get great coverage, and then just nothing. But then occasionally Exelon would come out with some horrible thing that was great for them and terrible for us, and everybody would get demoralized, and like people wouldn't answer their emails for three days. So a big part of this is like, always bringing people back, whether it's your teammates or the client or your public audiences. It's a constant, dynamic struggle to keep things heading in the direction you want. There's one other thing that made this an artificial exercise. Uh, I didn't have Exelon do anything. This was all one-sided. Um, you know, they say that the best battle plan goes out the window when the first shot is fired, right? No public campaign, including if you're trying to sell soda or shoes or sunglasses or driverless cars. No public campaign occurs in a vacuum. You will always have an opponent, even if the opponent is Pepsi, or just a consumer that doesn't want to buy your thing yet, or Trump, right? You'll always have an opponent. And remember, if they're smart, if they have any money, they're doing the exact same thing you're doing. They're coming up with a communications plan. They have a budget. They have a calendar. They know all the things you know. And they're going to do all the things you do or more. So the last thing I want to leave you guys with is, especially if you're going to work for a nonprofit, never underestimate your opponent. Even if you disagree with them, they're not stupid. Assume they are the smartest people in the world. Okay? Assume they're going to do the skeeziest thing, but they're going to do it really well. And know that they will surprise you. And you will get kicked in the teeth. And that at least two-thirds of the things you try are not going to work. Even if you really thought they were going to work. Like, why didn't anybody show up to this press conference? Why didn't this report get any coverage? I once had a client spend $30,000 on a poll that got no coverage. They should have fired me. They didn't. Um, so this is, this is a dynamic process. Never underestimate the opponent and never give up. Never, ever give up. Because the thing is, they spent $50 million, not including bribes. We spent about a quarter of a million dollars in cash and a lot of people's time. We almost defeated the largest merger in the history of the U.S. electric system. All right. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you for all your hard work, and thanks for having me here.